All right, everybody. I recently got these children's books because um, I want to get back into children's book illustration, and I absolutely adore this illustrator. Her name is Chihiro Iwasaki. Saki. She is Japanese. She's no longer living, but fascinating illustrator, probably the prime of her career. She was probably in the um, 50s. And so she um, re-imaged a lot of Hans Christian Andersen um, children's book uh, fairy tales. So um, I have two of her books. This is called The Red Shoes. And then the other one is The Little Mermaid. The of the colors, the use of watercolors here. Um, just so imaginative, colorful, beautiful illustrations. And like I said, lots of white space. Look at that one. Love that. Um, and then she's combining it with this, you know, line work, minimal line work, a lot of color on color. And I just love the way she captures these emotions and feelings. It's such a sad story, The Little Mermaid. Um, but yeah, I just really admire her work and look at that one. Beautiful. Like, I, I love the expression. Very minimal, but you get the feeling that, that she's so thoughtful. She's thinking about her decisions and choices at the moment. Gorgeous. Like I said, just the way she uses that white space and her lines and shapes. It's fantastic. And the texture she's getting. Like this is beautiful another beautiful illustration. The feeling that you get, the you know, and the mood. Really beautiful. I love older style of illustration. That's just me in particular. Um, so I'm gonna do a, a master copy of um, one of her illustrations that I really oh, this is gorgeous. I mean, it's so simple, but it's just so effective. So love that. The red shoes. I think I, I, I love The Little Mermaid, but I love the illustrations in this. And I got really lucky. I got this off eBay. And look at, I got this. Woo! Like, like this little brochure of different um, old school illustrators that they use. Um, Picture Book Studio USA. And they've done these books. So it's really cool. So yeah, you do have to do... A little bit digging for her books um, but you can find some good deals on eBay beautiful with the red shoes oh this one this is probably beautiful I love it yeah I love how she uses her white space and the colors and the values to make this character stand out um, <clears throat> you know this would be really tough to pull off like a lot of brown because a lot of times you're like, oh, that's a lot of brown. Um, it works. It's beautiful. I love the textures. And and I think she pulls it off because of the textures. You know, this, this very muted color of brown. I love this. It's beautiful. You know, and I, I always wonder whenever I look at these children's books, how faithful have they kept, kept to the original color? You know, I was wondering, like, you know, are the colors more bright? Are these, you know, more muted? You know, you never know. But I love the use of texture. I love the white space. This is gorgeous. Another beautiful one. She does these really beautiful forest scenes. And they're so, like minimal it's like there isn't <laughs> but i go like oh my gosh it's so genius look at that and i don't know if it's like that very japanese sensibility of influence uh in the work um because the actual like you know like this feels very fluid japanese style like you'd see that in their um paintings when i've researched stuff another one beautiful like very muted colors Really hard to pull, pull off, but she does that because you have this very complex scene right here. You know, it's so intentional. She she chooses these muted colors because she really wants to highlight the red shoes down at the bottom. And I don't know if I can show this. Oops. Let me move that over. Yeah, so the red shoes pop. 
at the bottom. A lot of white space for her text. But yeah, I mean, this looks like Notre um, Dame Cathedral. But yeah, beautiful. Oh, another beautiful illustration right here. Scale, beautiful use of scale. Really nice, large portrait. I love that, you know, she just gets these moments. They're just really, like, sad. And you're just like, oh, I just feel like a heaviness right here from the look on this girl's face. You know, there's the, this story is very um, violent. <laughs> it's kind of story where it's very harsh um, if you really go by the true Hans Christian Andersen story. And then the cathedral right here. But I, I love how she just bleeds. She does this a lot. She bleeds um, the figures into um, whatever color she has going around in the background. So I'm looking for why do I like this work? Why do I find her work so appealing to me that I would want to actually, you know, pick up some things stylistically because I love her use of color. I love her use of texture, um, composition. I mean, there's so many different things. Probably her line work, it's, it's just fantastic. But anyway, so I'm going to do um, a master copy of her work today and I'm just going to video record what it looks like and um, speed record it. So anyways, but find illustrators you like and they're like for me, I also printed out some copies of other works like her children because I, I love how she captures her kids and I want to kind of do that in my own work. I, I know that for me, I'm lacking more illustrations of kids. It seems obvious that if you're gonna be a children's book illustrator, you wanna have illustrations of children because obviously if you look at the surveys they do of the industry and they go like, what are the books that are being actually published? Um, the majority are, of course, um, child-based characters. Right next to that, you get um, animal characters. Then you start getting down into more of the diverse groups, um, more of the minority groups then follow along. And I'll put a link in the description box because uh, the C, uh, well, it's the Children's Book Council and also uh, Lee and Low Books, they have a survey that they conduct every year and that kind of breaks down. And you can see kind of where is the industry, where does it go towards. Um, and then making your portfolio, you know, you want to do stuff that you're interested in as well. But obviously, if you're doing the children's book industry, lots of children, lots of people of different ages, um, and then different environments so that you can build a portfolio that a publisher seems like they're gonna be like, okay, we we, th we can trust this person to do a good job for the actual project. And so I really took an objective look at my work and I said, well, what am I really lacking? I'm lacking children. I mean, I've been focusing on trying to get my technique down. Um, and now I'm like, I really wanna, drive home on how do I want my kids to look and how do I want them to be consistently done. So it's also characterizing these kids, but doing them like the way that Jiro Iwasaki does. She's very consistent. Like I can tell from this illustration here, from this book, it's all her work. Um, some illustrators do different styles. Like I'm, I interned with an illustrator. He is fantastic and he is able to master lots of styles. But I think for me, you know, I, I feel like I really need to hone in on one style and then kind of move around and try to play um, because otherwise I tend to play too much and then I'm never getting focused on being strong at one thing. And it's so easy to get distracted in your illustration styles and say, oh, I'm going to try this or I'm going to try that. So um, I think the reason that they'll tell you in art school, they'll be like, well, focus in on one style and try to master it because you're going to get projects and you're going to have to be pretty quick depending on the type of work. Uh, children's books is much slower. I would primarily get six months to a year um, with a small publisher to turn around the illustrations. And I was working full time too. So I had a full time day job, other duties and things like that. So just be aware that, you know, the, if you do get one style and technique down, you're able to turn around the work faster. I think that's one of the big things. Um, and also your skill level will jump up a lot higher. So 
a lot of illustrators in children's books who, um, some of the ones that I really admire, they jump around styles a lot, um, probably because they probably get bored doing the same style all the time. But if you're just starting out, it may be the best route for you to just really hone down what type of medium do you like to work in and then what kind of style and I think style while that kind of evolves and that will change over time like I've changed techniques like it's drastically different than what I started with uh, 10 years ago <laughs> so it just keeps changing and changing and even 20 years ago like what I was doing so I think everybody's different you got to figure out what works for you and I don't and the nice thing is there's no right or wrong all these illustrators I've talked to and interviewed on my podcast they have different solutions some of them have gone more of the traditional route of like I'm gonna have one style I'm gonna have one technique and I'm gonna run with it and then I've had um, a few few illustrators they will jump around more and it's they've just done so many book projects that they're like I want to stay fresh I want to stay new and they feel like it's based on the actual story what does the story feel like it needs that that illustrator can bring to the table is it a style that they do in acrylics or is it a style that they do in collage so it's something that um, every illustrator um, tries to figure out and do for themselves and I think you know in a gut reaction you kind of feel like this is the direction and as you get more whether it's positive feedback or you're um, doing more of the work that you you just like it I mean I, I think it's a good barometer of knowing do I like doing this kind of work do I enjoy it? so whether it's children's books editorial or advertising you can uh, kind of apply it and see how that works for you but anyway